Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna look at cryptocurrency staking, decentralized finance, and centralized finance interest earning platforms in order to achieve a goal of $10,000 per month in passive income. I'm gonna use my retirement fund as an example and show you that live uh, to where we are right now and looking at some numbers moving forward into how long I think this may take. If you find some value from the video, let me know. Hit the like button down below. It goes a very long way to helping out the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about cryptocurrency and passive income. Hit the bell notification icon and let's get started. I'll break the video up into some easy to follow steps. These are the thought processes that I've gone through. Maybe you'd like to use them. So screenshot this if you want and go ahead and use this in your own time. So the main thing that we need to look at is starting with a goal and then creating a plan, which I'll go through in just a moment. Figure out what it is you wanna achieve. So in this case, I've got my retirement fund coming up so you can see those numbers. Lay out some numbers, some practical numbers, some interest returns so that you can really see what a target would look like for yourself. And then go through a whole list of ideas and thoughts that you have when it comes to understanding what staking is, what central finance is, what decentralized finance is, and then into some of the deeper areas like yield farming. For this example, I'm just gonna look at staking and interest earning centralized finance. I'm not gonna go into yield farming, that's another video entirely, and involves a lot more risk. And for my goal, I'm looking to achieve a safer return because this is my retirement fund. I'm not interested in yield farming with it. I want something easy because I'm focusing more energy on building my business and trading rather than yield farming. So like I've got here, a couple of questions. You want 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, all the numbers we can figure it out and then have a target of what we wanna hit. I'm using an average percentage of about 7% and currently, my retirement fund is about 292,000 Aussie dollars, which is about 223,000 US dollars. As a goal, I'm looking at around 900,000, but we'll cover that towards the end of the video when I get to the example. And you can check out the timestamps down below for more information. The thoughts I have around creating a plan, and it's not limited to these, is firstly, do your own research. Is this a long-term strategy or short-term play? or are you gonna try and swing trade the markets? That's something that you need to take into consideration because that's gonna affect which you choose in terms of centralized or how long you wanna stake these projects for or staking a particular cryptocurrency rather than stable coins. Now, I've been in cryptocurrency since early 2017 and this space is continually evolving. From 2017, we were looking at things like masternodes which aren't very big anymore and it's flipped over to stuff like staking and interest earning Uh, exchanges uh, primarily and also these apps that we can earn interest on. So just take note that the space is evolving. This is not a stagnant thing and it doesn't look like it'll be stagnant for many, many, many years to come. So you really need to stay with the market and understand what's going on because this cycle, staking is it. Next cycle, we don't know what is going to come our way. New products coming out all the time. That's pretty much the same as that. There's always new stuff happening. So stick with it. Passive income is passive, but you've got to work for it in the beginning. There's no free lunch. Stock portfolios, dividends, tokenized stocks, there's new things coming out now. So we have tokenized stocks, which we're seeing come out on Binance. They they have tokenized Tesla and Coinbase. And eventually they'll have other stocks which you can earn dividends from. So you've got other platforms like FTX Exchange where you can hold some stocks. And then if they are dividend earning, if they have dividend yields on them, you can also get paid out in dividends from these stocks. So this is all going to depend on the jurisdiction that you're in, the availability of these products. So we know that there are some products which aren't available for the US guys and likewise for Australia. So you really got to look at which ones are going to work for you as well. And I can't cover everything in this video because that would be a whole video on its own. Now, some of these platforms also may have KYC. So I want to take that in consideration if you don't want to go through a KYC process and you prefer this just to be out in the ether somewhere. DeFi and staking crypto risks. Let's have a look at some of the risks and we also have some other problems a little bit further on. It's all important to get through before we look at some of the numbers and some of the platforms themselves because this is kind of the guts and the research around it. Now, again, this is not limited to these. This is what I've come up with and it suits the way I am looking to stake my crypto from my retirement fund. 
DeFi versus staking. DeFi requires interaction with a third party. So that obviously brings some risk. Now it's my retirement fund. I want to try to reduce the amount of risk that I'm throwing this way. DeFi may lend out your coins and give you a small kickback, basically like banking, except if the protocols are hacked, you don't have anyone you can call to get that money back. So that is a major concern when it comes to DeFi, so decentralized finance lending as well. All right, so staking doesn't have this issue, but the problem with staking is if you hold something, for example, Cardano is a staking coin and it's about $1.50 at the moment US, say it goes up to 10 bucks and then has a correction to $3, now you've lost 70% of the value. So you need to keep track of the market. It's just, it's gonna depend on when you buy into these coins as well. Now with staking, you hold your keys and you have full custody of your keys. Interest earning staking on exchanges is not self custody. So there are uh, things like Binance where you could hold ADA on there and get your staking returns. But again, that means you're giving over your keys and your money to Binance. Now we can choose something else that may have better insurance like a BlockFi or Crypto.com, which we'll get to in just a moment. Similar returns, more work with staking. So the reason why you'd go with an exchange or one of these apps is that there is a lot less work to setting it up. Something like Cardano, you've got to set up a wallet, then you've got to go find a pool, and then you have to keep changing between the different pools for uh, better returns. So then you've got to keep an eye on that as well, but you have more security. So overall, you're always weighing up security versus return, return versus security. So that's an easy way to look at it. How much security are you willing to forego in order for the ease of the return and vice versa. DeFi wallets, basically, you can have a look at these as individual cryptos, so decentralized finance, something like an Aave or a Yearn Finance, YFI. Uh, they are going to do that work for you, but then you're going to have to purchase that cryptocurrency, which is exposed to the volatility of the underlying asset itself. Liquidity mining, yield mining, these are all sorts of things which we're not going to get into in this video. They take a lot more time. They're not, I don't believe they're for beginners, but by all means, don't let that stop you from learning about them a little further. Essentially, you're going to, now going to lend out your assets like a bank would, and then they're going to play the market in order to get the best returns for you when it comes to providing liquidity to different pools. So this is a more experienced endeavor. And for this video, I'm not looking at covering this because I'm using my retirement fund and I don't want the hassles of this. I want something a little easier and I'm weighing up the security risks of decentralized finance as well. As we looked at earlier, there are hacks of the lending protocol themselves. We have seen this before. You basically lose all your funds and you don't have anyone that you can contact. It doesn't happen with all of them, but that is a real risk at the moment because this is a, an experiment. This is not like putting your money with a, a bank that you are trusting in your home country. And even if that bank goes down, Hopefully they have insurance and then the government can pay you back. There is none of that in this space. It is all experimental. Data breaches, security hacks, difficulty level is high. So they're all the problems that I find with DeFi. I'm not saying it's a bad thing and I wouldn't do it in the future, but because I've figured out my goal here and I assume for, well, I'm presuming for many people, they want something a little bit easier initially and then maybe look to these other interest earning and yield earning uh, endeavors down the track. So platforms in the centralized market, crypto.com, BlockFi, got to weigh up their pros and their cons. Transparent, partnered with Gemini, audited in the US, full KYC. Sometimes people see these as good, sometimes they don't. They don't want it having full KYC, they don't want it being in the US. You've got to make your own decisions. Crypto.com is uh, headquartered in Hong Kong. They also have some insurance. Binance, not regulated, but they do have a huge array of different cryptocurrencies. Nexo is another one, Celsius is another one, Voyager mostly for US, FTX exchange is also growing out like Binance and could potentially be a rival to Binance, plus there's so many more. So you can see that if we were to go down this list and there's going to be more people coming on and some that are leaving the space, you can see that we could be here all day discussing these. But overall, when you go through and look at their interests, they're all very similar. It's just a matter of which platforms work better for you. And we'll have a look at that in just a moment. Now, conditions. The market, bull and bear. Conditions change, strategies change. Right now, we're in a bull market. You have to decide, is this part of your strategy? For me, I don't want to be staking too much in a bull market because 
when if it gets locked up then I won't be able to sell them so you have to then look at how long do you want to lock these tokens for because the longer you lock generally you get a higher interest rate in a bear market probably want to be looking at purchasing these whatever coins you like cheaper and then holding them in there and you can lock them for a longer period of time you can lock it into the bull market as we've seen bull markets can rise for some period of time three months six months 12 months they could go longer but as it's rising then the the price of the coin is also increasing so your interest rate may stay the same at five percent but instead of holding a dollar coin now now you hold a five dollar coin and you're still getting five percent on the amount that you originally had so you have a thousand at a thousand bucks you're getting five percent there's your fifty dollars now it's worth five thousand so you're still getting five percent of the coins but now it's worth two hundred and fifty dollars so this is why staying with a market through bull and bear is very very helpful interest earning saves money keeps you with an investment so that's what i just said there it's being with a market and even if you're just earning a few percent it keeps your interest here and that is the main thing that i have seen over my period of investing that people will lose money or not make as much money as they should they don't have an interest with the market they lose interest and then they miss out on the bear market which is where all the money is made the biggest money is made in those big gains from the early stages so maybe having a small account that keeps you interested in the market until you build up a bigger portfolio to invest for your five or ten percent will actually make you some big money in the long term just something to consider now look out for crypto scams moving on from all of the stuff that we just we're going about to look at crypto scams trading businesses people that are going to take some of your bitcoin or ethereum or whatever crypto and trade it trade it in the markets and give you back a guaranteed one percent a day half a percent a day five percent a week whatever the figure is anything guaranteed in that regard which sounds too good to be true one percent a day is 365 percent a year is probably going to lose your money somewhere along the line it might make money for a few years two years two months you just don't know when it started so it's mostly like a ponzi scheme cloud mining bit club went down crypto lending bit connect if you haven't heard of that go and check it out very not funny for the people that were in it but funny watching it from the outside high interest rates usually scams mlm structures buy this plan or this mining contract or some other sort of contract scam all of these are scams maybe we'll make you money in the short term but overall they uh, they have a very high rate of going bust guaranteed returns like we just looked at so be careful with crypto scams they sound good but they usually come out in a bull market and they are usually not there in a bear market so you'll lose everything what should i stake stable coins btc or eth altcoins spread the risk out across multiple platforms let's have a look at that i'll go through my retire uh, live example retirement fund and to let you know, I, I am sponsored by BlockFi and Crypto.com. And I have all the referral links in the description down below for things like Binance as well. So I'm not saying you have to use BlockFi or Crypto.com. I prefer to use something like Crypto.com, but there are plenty of them out there. Nexo is very good. Celsius also very good. But I prefer to use Crypto.com. There's a debit card with that and it works very nicely for me. But you go through and choose which apps work best for you. I just thought I would want to mention that here so that you guys know as well. But I'm putting this video together because there have been a lot of requests for staking and understanding that uh, yourself. Lastly, anything that I missed here, let me know in the comments. Now, let's have a look at some of the platforms and the numbers. Let's start with crypto.com. As I said, I am sponsored from crypto.com, but I used crypto.com long before they came out and contacted me about talking about them on channels because I like their product. Let's have a look here. 8.5%, 6%, 14%. These are figures if you have a high number of CRO staked on the platform, but looking at 5,000 or less, we're going to look at it, USD, $5,000. If you have a three month lockup, you can earn about $5,000 per year paid in the USDC coin. So it's about 10%. That's more or less what most people will probably have. Or if you don't have 5,000, obviously a thousand, but I'm just saying here, you don't have to stake a huge amount or, uh, well, you need to lock it up for three months, but if you want it flexible, then you're going to be at around 6%. So that could allow you to have a little more interest and it's USD, not a problem. So crypto.com has a lot of tokens and I like them for their stable coins and Ethereum and Bitcoin primarily, plus the app is really easy to use. Now, looking at which states they're available in, it says here they're available in all 49 states of the US and territories, so no problems for the US guys. 
BlockFi, similar rates. They got 6% on BTC, ETH 5.25 and LINK at 5.5. So they also have Litecoin and the rest of them, which are pretty good rates, better than Crypto.com. Let's have a look at Nexus. Like I said, these ones aren't, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but they also have pretty good rates uh, looking at their stable coins around 10%. So this is all important before we look at the numbers because you just wanna have a look at the platforms, where we're gonna be getting these five to 10% returns because it's gonna have to be uh, split across stable coins and cryptos. Now, looking at this in terms of bull and bear, I like having stable coins because that gives me dry powder to go in and buy the, the lows and it keeps me in the market. I'm interested, 10% is pretty good. 8% is pretty good. 6% is also fantastic when you look at the traditional banking markets. That's the primary platforms here. These are the easy apps to use. Celsius, also great. You've got a good get $40 in BTC and you can refer friends and get more money in these. So I won't go into these too much because you really want to have a look at the numbers. Anyone can search these sites and you can look at all of the earns on their uh, on their websites because they're continually changing as well. 6% on Bitcoin, good 13%, and then a 6% on ETH. So basically I can switch between any of these platforms providing I'm not locked into any on a particular platform. Now this is also a good way to spread the risk because we're gonna have to look at getting 900, like you saw in the example, around 900,000, a million dollars, and putting it all in one platform is risky. Now I'm not gonna get my money back from any of these companies if they go bust, but at least I could spread out the risk and put 200 grand on a few of these different platforms. And then that could hopefully prevent dire situations if one of them went down and I had the full million dollars in there. Voyager is also another one, but it's mostly in the US. So you guys can check this out. Again, like we can see, similar rates, 6%, 5%, USDC around nine. So they range between eight and 12-ish percent for the stable coins. And that's where we need uh, to get our higher interest rates. And then we average that out with the Bitcoin and Ethereum around the 5%. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the spreadsheet. And this is my super fund here, 292,000. Uh, this is the date. So my super fund, uh, yeah, for the Aussies, SMSF and retirement fund, you could do this in, a, in an IRA for the US guys and you'd have to self-direct it, I believe it's called self-directed IRA. This is current price in US. So for easy figures, we're gonna call it quarter of a million. Basically, I'm looking for a 4x from here to get to about a million dollars. Now, I have these areas highlighted in the orange because they're a good target to hit for around a $5,000 per month passive income up to a $10,000. So that's if I get a 10%. If I had it all in a USDC coin and I had to spread them across platforms because some of the platforms don't allow more than... $500,000 on any single one, so I can spread it across, I do know that I can get about 10%. Now this is all dynamic and they could drop the interest rates as more people flood into the market. Uh, that is also a possibility. So I'm gonna play it safe and just look at five and 7%. So that's why I've got a target here of around 1.2 to 1.5, because that gets me very close to the $10,000 per month and if the cryptos continue to increase, then I'm going to be earning a lot more than the 8,000 because this is just at the price that they currently are or four times from where they are. So Ethereum at the moment in Aussie dollars, sorry about the US to Aussie conversion, but at the moment in Aussie, it's three grand. Don't worry, the numbers all are still the same for US. It's just a matter of doing the conversion. So don't worry, 3,000 for ETH, 82,000 for Bitcoin. Now, if we're looking at Bitcoin going to 200,000 or 250,000 in Aussie dollars and US, you know, around 200, then we can look at these going about three times higher. So at the moment, I'm looking to go three times on my 300K, gives me around 900. Then I'm gonna look at the million here. If I stake these on those platforms, then I've got my, my 5% over there, getting me about $4,000 a month and that's passive, I don't have to do anything. That's being conservative on the numbers as well. I could sell out some, put it into stable coins, have about half a million in stable coins. Now I'm getting 400,000 over there on stables and about 2,000 holding it in Bitcoin. Now if Bitcoin drops and I've got my dry powder ready to go and buy those bottoms again in a few years to come, then yes, I'm gonna be earning less on the Bitcoin. Maybe Bitcoin halves in value or a little more and I'm only earning about 800 to $1,000 a month for the moment, but I'm earning $4,000 on my 
USD. Now I can go and buy the Bitcoin at the lows, wherever that is, and then wait for Bitcoin to go up again. It's five times or 10 times or whatever it may be. And so there, now I'm playing that sort of game and that's the plan that I have here for the retirement fund. The other thing to note with the retirement fund is I don't plan to spend a lot of time on it because I can't touch this money for at least another 30 years. So with this strategy, I don't have to worry so much and that allows me more time to go and research the markets because I still believe the markets are going up. I still believe after a bear market, we'll still get some uh, higher, much higher prices. And just depending on where the market falls to in the, in the bear market, that's where I'll decide whether we're gonna have a very strong second bull or a weaker bull. But we've got a long way to go before then. But what I'm saying is that gives me time Having a strategy of just playing the major swings gives me time to go and research, build my business, go and do other things that I love. And I've got the plan here just to note that I'm looking at targeting around a million dollars, splitting it up between 500,000 into Bitcoin or Ethereum, because I have the both, both of them here, currently about 43 Ethereum and nearly two Bitcoin in, in my super fund here. So that gives me about 2K and when I sell some at some point, about 4K into USDT or USDC. So that's another part of the whole piece of the puzzle is which stable coins to use. But that is going to be for another video. At the moment, looks like USDC is pretty safe. USDT, people are still wanting more auditing done on it. But so far, it has, it has done wonders for the industry. And even after all of the scares, it's still here. Overall, that's the staking. That's the plan. That's what I'm looking at in terms of interest earning and why I chose interest earning over something like decentralized finance. This is more of the centralized finance. Um, we also have staking, which I'm not looking at doing yet. There's no staking for Bitcoin. Staking is essentially locking up that crypto and using their services, um, looking after the network as well, providing security for the network. And you'll have to set up a wallet, move the cryptocurrency into the wallet, and then uh, delegate that crypto and your your votes to the network. So that takes a bit more time, but I would prefer to do that in a bear market because I can start to buy those cryptos at lower prices and they're going to be the highly volatile stuff like Cardano. So Cardano could shoot up, drop all the way back down and now I'm out of profits. So it's a lot riskier. That's why I'm going to stick with something that's easier and safer, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins to meet this goal. So I hope that gave you a good overview. Let me know in the comments. By no means is, is this like a full wrap up of everything yield farming. It's just such a huge space and forever changing. But let me know if you have any other questions about staking, about decentralized finance, centralized finance, more importantly, when it comes to this sort of video, as it was a bit light on with the decentralized stuff, but I gave the reasons why I am not that keen on it for this type of investment, especially with how much there is uh, involved with it and the potential of the problems there. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, I hope that helped out a lot. Let me know, comments down below, subscribe to the channel if you wanna know more about cryptocurrency and my look at passive income because that is primarily what we want at the end of the day is to create our own passive income vehicles, which are fantastic to use from the bear markets. It's a great way to build them up. There's a free newsletter, video description for the free newsletter. So uh, join that and you'll receive a whole lot of stuff on uh, finance and personal finances. About every two weeks, we've got a free newsletter coming out down there. Thank you once again. Catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.